Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, I was in the Gospel of John, chapter one, and I read verses one through five. I wanna go back real quick and just clarify something because I wanna make sure you understand what I was saying. I used the Jerusalem Targum. It is a Jewish writing, and it is actually the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Torah, the writings of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. It's also known as the Pentateuch. Pente means five. That's where they get the word Pentateuch. Okay, let me just throw this in for free today because I really want to say this. Right now today, and I have so much uh, respect for the Jewish people, they teach their children starting at the age of five the Torah. Many of them, they don't force them to, you know, it's not a law, and they don't force their kids into uh, memorizing this, but many, many of them help them, their children memorize scripture. And by the time they're seven, eight, maybe 10 years old, they know by memory the first five books of the Bible. And yes, that does include uh, Deuteronomy and, and those boring chapters that we can't hardly even read. So I have a huge respect for the Jewish people. But let's go back because I want to talk about this today uh, when I was over in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and I read verses 1 through 5 yesterday. So if you haven't watched that snippet, go back and watch it. But I want to add one verse to it and then I want to talk about it. I'm going to skip down okay, uh, and read uh, verse 14 real quick. It says, And the Word, Jesus, became a human and lived among us. Okay, that's all I'm going to do today because I want to go back and talk about verses 1 through 5 and then uh, verse 14. Did you know uh, when I first got born again 10 years ago, God just started downloading a lot of things in me and I think he needed to seal my belief in him and proved to me he was who he said he was in my mother's hospital room. So I started just studying not just the Bible, but other outside things not to disprove the Bible that made the Bible weave itself together and prove itself out to me. And I'm just going to tell you, I am so set firm in believing and knowing that the Word of God is inspired that God is, is real, he exists, and that Jesus is real and the Holy Spirit. You, you're, you can't shake me or break me because I have had experiences that overrule other people's opinions. And I also have the Word of God in me, alive in me. So let me just talk about this today. I studied a lot of stuff. I, and I still do. God just put it in me, and I have this hunger that just won't let up 10 years later. But I studied this. This is Fast Facts on False Teachings. I want to talk to you about that today. Did you know that every single false teaching, false religion, and I can name them off here right here on the Internet, but I won't do that. You can get on the Internet and look this book up, and it lists 16 different false uh, teachings and religions. I don't mind holding it up and seeing if you can uh, you can put, pause it and see what's in the book. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but all of the false religions, and let me throw this in for free, even denominations of evangelical Christian churches, different denominations within what is called evangelical or Christian faiths will deny something in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, or through these scriptures, and many of them deny the first chapter. And did you know that's why John wrote this? It's because it had already started in his day, and here it is 2,000 years later. We have false denominations set up that deny exactly what chapter 1 of the Gospel of John teaches and it's verified through the Bible, but the people in those religions, those false teachings and stuff, 
are so deceived that they cannot read this one chapter and realize that they're caught up in deception. So let me go over. I want to show you how cool the Bible is because John writes this. He talks about Jesus coming, being pre-existent with God, and him coming to earth and being a human being, being the Son of God, his one and only begotten Son, which is what we have to believe on to be truly born again and saved. But watch, I want to flip over, and I want to go over to 1 John. This is a letter toward the back of your Bible. It's 1 John chapter 4, and I'm just going to read this to you. Now, I am in the Amplified Classic Edition today. So here we go. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove and test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many false prophets have gone forth into the world. By this you may know, perceive, and recognize the Spirit of God, every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus, the Messiah, actually had become a man and has come in the flesh is of God, and God is its source, the source of that spirit that's teaching. Okay, watch this. And every spirit which does not acknowledge and confess that Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, has come in the flesh is not of God. This non-confession is the spirit of the Antichrist, the one who is against God, of which you heard was coming. And it is already in the world. I'm going to stop right there. I just read to you how God tells us how we can determine whether a false teaching or a religion or even a teacher in our churches is of the Spirit of God is whether they confess and agree with what is written right here in our Bibles. And I'm telling you, my friends, I have seen lots and lots of this not lining up with each other. Now, I want to tell you one more thing that I'm going to close. I also have known, now I've not ever had to do this, but I have had friends and other people tell me that they have had interactions with spirits. And when they ask the question, if th this spirit is of God, and did Jesus Christ, the Messiah, come in the flesh from God? If that spirit cannot agree with and say out loud that that is true, then it's not a spirit from God. That it, that type of spirit will get mad and either leave or argue with them. Uh, and I'm telling you guys, I, I've never experienced it, but I want you to know, many, many people who deal in deliverances and setting people free of demonic influences in their life will ask spirits that to see if they really are of God or if they are unclean and from a demonic realm. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up today. I love you, and tomorrow I think I'm going to just do a miracle story for you. I'll see you again right here on Facebook. Bye-bye.